you know, it's beautiful and it's going to be, you know, it'll be July, it'll be now. So I think people are going to really love it. The Democratic National Convention is one year away and hosting thousands of people at Pfizer Forum and across the city takes a lot of work. I'm talking with the man who's leading the convention team. He's a longtime political strategist. Joe Salmaniz is joining us now. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So I know that you're really in the process right now of moving to Milwaukee yes. from New York City. What are your first impressions so far? Oh, I love it here. You know, I've been here a number of times, uh, you know, after I took the job, and I'm now here permanently. But it's a beautiful city, and uh, I, you know, I've had the chance to go out and walk around and really explore. But, but for me, I think one of the the things that I'm most inspired by is, um, you know, the, the the diverse group of people who came together to do the work to bring the convention here are the people who are still in place doing that work, and I've really loved getting to know them and work with them, and and you know, begin the planning process. And we're one year out, yeah. and this is a huge event. So where are you right now in terms of preparation? What are you doing now? So we're uh, assembling a staff and, um, you know, getting to work on some of the logistical things, whether it's, um, you know, sort of what the stage would look like or how it is that we're going to accommodate people or transport people, but also really thinking uh, as expansively and creatively as we can about how it is that, um, you know, as many people as possible can be a part of this experience here in Milwaukee and across the state of Wisconsin. And I know you have to raise a lot of money, $70 million to put this event on. Where are you right now in terms of fundraising? Uh, I, I wouldn't want to speak specifically uh, on behalf of the host committee, but I would say that, um, you know, I think they are somewhere between 10 and $20 million having been raised, which is um, really ahead of the schedule that they have committed to at this point. And I think two of the big questions people talk about are fundraising and then the perimeter when it right. comes to an event like this and security. I know you're having a lot of meetings about that yeah. right now. What can you tell us? So one of the, f the first things, as you can imagine, uh, that is happening is really bringing together the leadership team that is going to be responsible for security. So everybody from local law enforcement, the Milwaukee De Police Department, to the U.S. Secret Service. And so people have asked, well, what is the perimeter going to be? You know, like, like sort of what exactly will the security perimeter be in the city? And, uh, you know, what we have been told is that it is going to take some time for the Secret service to do its work to be as intentional and thoughtful as they need to be about just what that perimeter needs to be uh, and that probably sometime around the end of the year we're going to have uh, a pretty good idea of what that's going to look like and you know right after the first of the year we'll be in a position to really talk with local businesses and residents uh, about what that impact is going to be and how it is that they will be impacted by that security perimeter and hopefully you know between January and July that will give folks enough time to adjust accordingly. So people can know in terms of going to work exactly. and school and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And I mean, Milwaukee is a place that like a lot of city has challenges. I mean, it's not perfect. You have crime in some parts of the city, poverty. We've had several police officers shot. I mean, what's your take on that and holding such a big event here? Well, I think any city that we would be going to or we would be considering, you know, to bring a national convention to uh, has its share of uh, opportunities and challenges, and Milwaukee is no different. And I think for us, uh, you know, it's ensuring that we, um, as proactively as we can be, put the pieces in place and, you know, take the steps that we need to take to ensure that, uh, you know, that the convention goes off in the way that it, it should go off. But I think, um, you know, what's equally important to us is to make sure that as the eyes of the world, you know, are on Milwaukee next year, uh, that we are able to really lift up you know, what I think is an incredibly inspiring story, uh, you know, uh, um, here in Milwaukee and show that to the world and that we bring, you know, the convention delegates and, and the people who are watching not just to the Pfizer Forum, but really to all of Milwaukee and quite frankly to the state of Wisconsin. And, and, and how do you do that? I mean, when the convention is so focused on downtown, how do you make sure that people see other parts of the state? Well, you know, it's a five-day event, you know, where there are going to be thousands of events happening, um, you know, really over the course of those five days. And so uh, the convention is not just the sort of three or four hours that people tune into uh, each night. The convention is really a lot more than that. And I think that there are all sorts of opportunities for us to bring people to different parts of the state and bring people to different, you know, different neighborhoods within Milwaukee, uh, you know, whether it's hosting events uh, or whether it's really being thoughtful about how it is that we create opportunities for volunteers, stakeholders, local business owners, or activists 
from all across the city and all across the state to be a part of the convention. And I think by virtue of bringing them into the convention, you showcase Milwaukee and you showcase the people of Wisconsin and the Midwest um, you know, in the way that, that we really should be. I know you're busy. Democratic National Convention one year away. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Right now, two dozen Democrats want to be president. Do voters know who they are? Oh my goodness, I have no idea who that is.